Moving right along, item number five, the Community Center Private Rentals uh, Rules and Procedures Follow-up. Um, and I had time to review what we did. Uh, Luke submitted. Um, any questions or comments from the Commission about this? How do you feel about it? Um, <coughs> uh, good. I actually really um, found the last meeting. Sorry, Shane, that you, that you missed it, but um, I would have loved to hear some of your feedback from that. But uh, it was uh, extremely helpful to hear uh, the Commission's thoughts and opinions on, on the subject of, of private rentals of the community center. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that we came away from that meeting with a pretty clear idea of um, sort of what the feelings were and um, helped staff on our end uh, kind of clarified sort of the direction that probably we want to move <coughs> in. So without making any major overhaul changes to our um, procedures, we have made some uh, changes to, to how we operate and I've highlighted those with the, the bullet points listed in the memo mm -hmm. um, to kind of help cut down on some of the negative uh, elements of the building rentals that we were addressing last meeting and um, I, I feel really comfortable with these and would be happy to hear any um, feedback that the, com that the Commission has. But. I guess I would ask um, the, the last bullet item, security, can you kind of define what activity warrants additional security, I guess. Sure. Um, that that's a great question, John. I think the the whole goal of a lot of these um, the previous bullet points are hopefully to um, keep us from having to go to that level of severity with with um, keeping the the rentals calm and under control and everything. So. Um, I think it would come if, if there was a certain uh, event that was reaching, you know, a certain capacity and the activities involved and what, what the nature of it was and the, the age group um, may, may elicit that, but we're hoping not to go there. This would be the, um, but that's something that we keep in our mm -hmm. policy that we could implement if, if it seemed like something that really warranted So that. you'll look at it on a case by case basis. Exactly. Yeah, well, under the discretion of the department. So. Is that additional fee then to the it would be uh, the renter would would cover the full cost of hiring um, said security company to be present at the rental, so they would incur all costs of, of that requirement. Do you have a security uh, company in mind? Do you like buy both, or do you think it's we have a few companies that uh, uh, other recreation departments use regularly? We talk to, um, and so I haven't set up an official. Agreement or you know with them, but there's there's a few that have been uh, considered reputable that we have we can reach out to if it comes to needing to set up a contract or something or uh, at least establish a you know, relationship with. Okay. Okay. One, one thought I had about uh, you know factors to take into consideration is if the event is going to require alcohol. That's something that might be. A, I don't know if that's allowed. <coughs> allowed on the premise, but for parties that are going to go. You know, Saturday night party that goes until 11 with hard liquor is a little bit different than the party that goes, and, you know, with wine and beer. Yeah. Uh, right. We definitely have not differentiated between uh, between that. One thing, the um, so we do ask, you know, if alcohol's being served or if it's being being sold, like it's some sort of fundraiser situation. Right. They indicate that as they have to get a permit for that. But if it's being served. Um, we do we do know that I we don't have um, anything differentiating between what types of alcohol the yeah so that's something that we, not suggesting you write it in but if it just you know it becomes evident that a full bar is going to be part of the event that sometimes can you know, yeah, open bar have things uh, can get a little bit more out of hand than with white and beard not always but you know yeah absolutely can play into it so. that's something we can, can can consider for sure. Um, this is not anything that we need to approve on, so it's, it's just a, I don't just read it, it's a follow-up. Yeah, it's a follow-up. It was, a, it was a, to, to Luke's point, I want to echo it, it was a really good conversation last time, and obviously staff has spent a lot of time on this, myself included, but primarily uh, Robin and Luke and Carolyn and a lot of leg work and research and time that they've put into it and really looking at what other agencies, primarily cities, are doing in this regard because um, there's only so many CSD or smaller districts like ours 
uh, and just and looking at what they had even on the security side. And I would say, John, you know, as we were looking at these, a lot of it was very, very ambiguous in terms of the city may or the town might require it. Didn't none of them really seem to have a set list of if you are. You know, like they didn't have an ABC test per se. Yeah. Boxes. Uh, yeah, then you have to have security. I mean, it left it for them to have the option of doing it, which to a lot of areas I understand concern with that, but I also can understand some level of agreement and discretion with that as well. And uh, that certainly also seemed to be a little bit of a concern that I think the commission shared last time was, well, I don't know if I want every event to have to have, you know, a, a uniformed uh, person walking around either is that uh, what kind of tone does that set right off the bat too so it was you know we heard but wanted to keep that as a uh, option for events if we felt it, it might be needed or beneficial yeah i'm working with uh, just some of the, the bullet points here is for some of the um elements of the problems that we've had over the years um generally end of the night so that was one reason to, to push um, earlier by one hour is that the thing, you know, between 11, 10 and 11, 11 and 12, or during the cleanup, whatever, is when we see most of the instances where I would get a call and, you know, got a problem going on or something. So um, that's going to, I think, help a lot in terms of one less hour of, of the uh, party goers drinking and, and whatnot. Um, and also the, the duration of the event, um, eight hours as opposed to some of the events we, you know, we have these 12 hour, 13 hour, 14 hour events where um, just that much longer as of being that much more extravagant of an event, that, that much more time for people to, you know, um, doing, doing whatever activities. And so um, I think this will sort of, um, the events that, that would be within these confines will, will probably be a little bit mellower and a little bit more, um, you know, control. So just in, in general. But. I think you guys did a really good job on strengthening the language regarding the last hour of it as well. That, yeah. You know, uh, the event is over at 10. This last hour is strictly for cleanup. You're going to need to have vacated by that time. Right. Uh, the, they, they, they made that much more clear in the application process this time, too. So I think that will help letting them know that at 10, your event's over. You get this extra hour strictly for cleanup purposes, not, well, you can keep the event going, just clean up there. You know, it was a little less, uh, a little more vague. I guess in the previous versions. So two questions just from a just I guess from an implementation standpoint, is this something that needs to curious? You know, this might be three questions actually. <laughs> is this something that is um, has the board has to approve or is this just a staff decision and it's a notification of the board at the next meeting? A. B if when does it start? If it didn't already start, and then C, are events already booked grandfathered? Uh, I'd say the answer is yes to all three. Um, the, the board uh, decides to, I mean, or correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, review any aspect of this or implement a policy or want to review business on the metal, something that definitely can come up at next board meeting or, or after that. Um, these changes are currently re reflected in our, in our current building contract and we've been taking reservations um, under the current situation. So. And it's a grand follow for people who took last year? Anyone that was currently on the calendar um, is uh, being held to the standard in the contract that they signed. Right. Um, and, and we review those. We've actually gone through the entire calendar once we started looking at the, the rentals in, in general. We looked at all the, the already booked events. Yeah. And if any of them um, seemed like we needed more information or was needed action, <coughs> we've actually contacted some of the renters and asked to do a walkthrough and, and explain the rules and regulations. So we've, most of them, um, you know, are, are ones we're, we're not concerned about, the ones that we thought were going to be a, a bigger party or one that, you know, might need more scrutiny. We've um, asked renters to come in before the event, come do a walkthrough with us, right. and we've, we've given the building attendant a little more of a prep and everything. Right. Right, so. Awesome. Do they have a fee if they're not get out on that? Because this is great how you say that the whoever signs the contract has to be there for checking out. Oh, it's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, they well, they charge the fee if they're not out on time because that really holds that person yeah, they're, accountable to get their party out. They pay security the deposit right uh, yeah. up front that is fully refundable. Um, uh, and the and then there are stipulations in the in the contract if, if not out of the building mm -hmm. um, on time according to the contract if there's damage mm -hmm. done or you know the couple of things that um, 
some moral the security deposit will be will be held. Um, We've definitely added reasons why you might not get your full security deposit back. Um, one of them being, you know, if for any reason law enforcement has to uh, come for an incident, that's a reason you won't get your security deposit back. If you're late, that's a reason. So we kind of bolstered that to let people know that uh, if you're expecting your security deposit back, you need to play by all of the rules and, and play properly. Uh, and then to answer your first question, um, at this point in time, I mean, the board has the option, certainly, to request that this come before them, that this becomes something that they approve. Um, this isn't a policy, per se, and this isn't a policy shift. I, I absolutely, 100%, if we would have stuck with the notion or the proposal of limiting this to, say, Marinwood residents only, that would have become a policy decision. This is a little bit more on the operational side. Um, Isabella can speak for the board much more than I can. I don't know that... Uh, beyond an update of some of the things that we've done, which I believe is certainly warranted, that it would need to come to them for a, a level of a, approval. I think this is more of a, a, a staff level thing. If we were to say, hey, no more rentals or severely limit who can rent, then you get into the creation of policy, at which point that's board. Right now, this is practice and procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, uh, I'm happy to see that the, the revised hours, I think that's a, a Good thing. I've always kind of considered the impact that these events have to the like the adjacent neighbors, people that are just across the road. And I think that's much more of a you know magnitude compared to you know if you live mm -hmm. a couple miles away. Or something, yeah. you know, I mean, this is these people are hearing this every week, right? And uh, so. Anything we can do to lessen that impact is, is a positive note. Absolutely. Um, That's the person that's I know we, we talked <laughs> last time about the, the revenue that these events generate, you know, and whether that was substantial enough to warrant continuing them or, or whether it was, you know, just break even when we're, you know, leaning towards. I, I think uh, Mr. Campos gated community was a bit strong, but uh, you know the limited to residents. So I'm mean, I'm just I'm just still kind of curious. That, that, do you make money doing that? The the rentals do bring in revenue, absolutely. Um, and the as to the question of how limiting. The residents to or the rentals to residents only. How that would affect the um, you know fiscal impact. That's one of those things. It's hard to answer. It's a it's an unknown. But we assume that you know the currently the residents made up about a third of the or half, about half of the reservations and are paying less um, by about fifty percent. So you can do that math, but um, and we assume that the resident rentals would actually increase with more availability um, with you know weekends. But you know, it would be a, if we don't go that direction, it's a moot point. But um, we'd still be bringing in you know the revenue would change significantly um, in that regard. Okay, I, I get the impression last time that it was difficult for residents to get reservations. You know, a, a short I guess maybe a short time in advance that things are. Pretty much always booked up. So I was, I don't know if we could develop some kind of a, just some kind of a program or a policy to kind of accommodate local residents, whether, I, I mean, I, I don't know enough about it to even, I could, I could make a suggestion of, say, dates around holidays or the end of school year or something, that there would be a, a couple of times that you could hold back on that if, if, if then the, the residents, I guess, were aware that these things were happening, that then make, make time available for people on, on, on like a shorter, yeah, that, that like one's playing their son's birthday a year in advance or something. You it, that one's tough just because, yeah, the nature of, you know, on the front end, like with camps, giving residents first dibs, you know, a lot allows for that, you know, to give give them the, the first go at it, but that's, you know, that, that's more in advance than, um, you know, saving, and, and just on our holiday, you know, the, around the holidays, the, the dates are really popular around Christmas and Thanksgiving, 
those actually are, do tend to be um, Merlin residents that book kind of these families in town that book a holiday party consistently year after year after year. So it, it's sort of already going that way by default because the people that okay, um, maybe they're, so. they're not missing out as much as no, they it's, <laughs> and, but it is. Yeah, I mean, because we book up uh, currently, you know, a year in advance, it's just if you're looking for anything on short notice, whether you're a resident or a non resident, it's just it's unlikely you're going to find something in a week or two. Um, but yeah, without designating, you know, I think it's very complicated to, to try to do that, and we probably end up having a lot of um, empty weekends as a result of that. But you know, it's kind of like the alarm. Call on day 364 before your event, and then you're guaranteed to get a spot, hopefully. <laughs> Any other uh, comments? No, I think that's great. I, I do really commend the time and effort and research that Luke and his staff put in there. I mean, it's, they did a lot of thoughtful thinking uh, to uh, the points that have been made. We were booked out so far in advance by the time this process was, I mean, we've been thinking about this for a long time. By the time they really dove into it, it was like, okay, when, when do we really start to see a noticeable break in what's already booked? So, I mean, the timing is now. We haven't, even though they've stopped taking future reservations, I mean, we've been still booked almost every single well, we haven't we haven't actually seen a break in the rentals um, right. yet. And so. that's just now kind of starting to come. Yeah, you know, it's off season. You're kind of got that shoulder season before the holidays, and so the implementation of this is good. And then we will have very few instances of one group being held to one process and other groups being held to a different process, even though their events might be five days.